What is up guys, Dr. Andre Pinesett here, The Study Doc, and this is the Student Transformation Show where I am here to transform you. You know where you are currently, you see where you wanna get, and the difference between those two is massive, so you need to make massive change, and you need to absolutely transform yourself as a student, and that's what this show is all about. Today, we are talking about perception. And we are talking about when perception doesn't meet reality and the consequences of that for you as a student, and as I mentioned before, the biggest change I made was my outlook on myself and on my ability to be a great student. And for you guys, I want you to start the same place. So we're gonna attack that mindset first. We're gonna attack that reality that you guys think is real, but it ain't real. It's not real. <laughs> it is not the truth. So let's get to the truth. This is the episode you need to get your head on straight. Let's get to it, y'all. But stop making excuses. Stop whining. Stop, right? Get at it. No excuses, just dominate. All right, like I said, I'm Dr. Pine. So this is the Student Transformation Show, all about transforming you into an incredible student. Today we're talking perception, perspective. How many of you guys feel in some way to be disadvantaged? How many of you guys feel in some way there's some obstacle holding you back, right? You see there's this big barrier, there's this big reason why you can't succeed. You gotta stop, <laughs> stop it right now. And I say this because every single day, guys, I get hundreds of emails, hundreds of messages every day, and I appreciate all of you guys for messaging me. I appreciate you all for emailing me. But please understand, if you email me and your email is laced with excuse after excuse after excuse, it, it irks me. You see the shirt? I wear this shirt 24-7 underneath my clothes. It's like my Superman outfit. It's no excuses, just dominate. So if you email me with excuse after excuse after excuse, how do you think I feel reading that? And this came to a head today because maybe two days ago, someone emailed me and it was this email and it was, hey, Dr. Pineset, um, insert name. I just want to let you know this, this is super urgent. Like their, their subject line was help with capital caps. And I was like, this is a super urgent request. I need you to get back to me right away. It's an important life thing. And I'm like, oh my gosh, this must be life and death. And so I read the email and this student goes on and it starts with, this is where I shouldn't have known I was in trouble, was the email started with back when I was five and I was like, holy smokes, right? I know we're about to get something crazy. And the student laid out every single bad thing that ever happened to them in their lives. From age five on, this happened and this happened and then you know i was gonna start doing better but then this happened and this happened and it started within five in five their teacher told them that they weren't smart and they moved them from what was a typical class to a slower like extended uh class where they would instead of doing the curriculum um and moving at a normal one-year pace essentially they were going to spread that curriculum out over two years so it was a, a slower paced class for the student and the student was hypothesizing that this move from a regular class to a remedial class affected them mentally. And they've always had this block on themselves where they've thought down on themselves and they've thought they're less than and they couldn't do it. And at every single level it affected them. And then like something else would happen and it would be, they were feeling good about themselves and something else would happen and it would knock their self-esteem down. And throughout their career, they just could not get over. And they were laying out, well, you know, my finances were difficult and, and then my dad got sick and then, you know, I had to work a job and then I had this and I had this. And at every point there was an excuse. And I say all this to say, and some of you guys are like, man, he keeps talking about these excuses. Does it feel exhausting? Does it feel exhausting to hear someone talk about excuse and reason and this and that? And of course it does. So imagine, imagine how I feel when I get dozens of these type of emails every single day. How exhausting is that for me? And, I, and, I, and again, I'm extending this to yourselves. How many of you guys feel absolutely burnt out, absolutely smoked, absolutely discouraged with your career? How many of you guys feel defeated, upset? How many of you guys feel those things? You feel angry about what you have to go through to be successful, what's holding you back? And all of this is said to say that when you build up this cocoon of obstacles, it, it's not a cocoon of wellness and growth, it is a cocoon of stunting. It is like attaching a big weight onto your ankle and saying you are a prisoner and you become the prisoner of your own thoughts and your own perception. And it's like, it's almost like the matrix. I always make the, the parallel to students that I am Morpheus and I'm trying to unplug you guys from the matrix that you guys have been put in. 
And instead of the Matrix being this wonderful place that you guys call the real world, it's this terrible place where school is difficult, where you can't succeed, where you can't get the A, where you spend lots of hours studying and none of it feels good. That's your life. And I'm trying to unplug you and tell you, hey, there's a whole other world out here where you can study less and get better grades, where you can enjoy and love to sit down and study. You can love to take tests because I myself have been there. I was that student who didn't like to do things and oh, it was so painful, but now I love to study. I love to take tests because it's, it's payday, right? It's, it's my day to eat. It's my opportunity to take advantage of all the things that I've learned. And so for you guys, I say all this to set up this matrix to say, you guys are building your own false reality and false perspectives that make you a prisoner to failure. They make you a prisoner to the C's. They make you a prisoner to the D's, to the F's. Because you have had such all these experiences. We are nothing but the sum of our experiences. Can we all agree on that at least? Right? That the person you are today, this is why colleges care about your college essays, why grad schools care about these essays, because the sum of your experiences shape you as a person. If you experience compassion early on in your life, it will make you appreciate that compassion and you will be a compassionate person. If you were abused as a child, the statistics show that you will go on to be, many of these are going on to be abusers, right? Because you grew up in that reality. It affects you psychologically what environment you're in. Academics is no different. For many of you guys, you have experienced early failures, early setbacks. Maybe you were moved to a remedial course like this student. But just because something happens to us and happens to us in a moment doesn't mean we have to let it happen to us over and over again for forever for our lives. If you were told you were remedial, like I was told that I didn't have what it takes to survive in college, you have a choice. You can say, well, I'm just remedial. I'm just not a college student. And you can succumb to that and you can make that your reality and you can internalize this negativity that someone's put on you and make that your reality where you see everything through that lens of, I'm not good enough. Yeah, I'm not even gonna try because I'm not good enough. And you'll make that your world. You'll make yourself not good enough. Or you can make the decision to say, you know what? That person is wrong. <laughs> I'm gonna prove them wrong. Or you can say that person is right, but I know I can be different. And when I say no excuse to dominate people, no excuse to just dominate the people, they often don't get what I'm saying. It doesn't translate to them. It sounds aggressive. It sounds, ooh, no excuse, just dominate, dominate. Ooh, I don't want It's a matter of perception. And that I perceive every obstacle, every adversity, every disadvantage, every reason that I should not succeed, that I should not be capable, I don't give it credence. I call it an excuse. I label it. I create a perception. I frame it. That's an excuse, Andre. I tell myself, you know what? You are a slow reader, that's an excuse. You can read faster. You know what, you're not disciplined, that's an excuse. You can be more disciplined. You know what, you don't have the money, it's an excuse, you can get the money. And every single time I looked at my world in that lens of saying, you know what, these are just excuses, right? It's simply just a, a perception shift. There's nothing, no actual change to what my adversity is. That perception change allowed me to get my mind unstuck. It allowed me to see things through a different lens. And instead of just looking at the problem as being this completely insurmountable wall, all of a sudden I started to turn my attention to solutions and say, well, how can I get over this wall? How can I get under this wall? How can I get around this wall? And I mean, as you guys can imagine, once I started focusing and recognizing there is a solution, I don't know what it is, but there is a solution. Guess what I did? What would you do if there was an obstacle in your way? If someone said, hey, there's a treasure on the other side of this wall, but you got to get over this wall. What would you immediately do? You would start looking for a ladder, a shovel. You would start looking for whatever you could find, the tool to get you over that wall. Right? That's what you guys have to do academically is you have to take your mind from saying, this is who I am, this is who I always will be, I've got these problems and these problems will not change. You have to say, no, this is who I am right now, this is what I face right now, but every single situation, every single problem, every single obstacle, it has a solution. 
and all I have to do is find that solution and I can overcome. That will force you to put your energy not into poo-pooing yourself and woo, being Debbie Downer and wanting everyone to agree with you that you have problems that you can't overcome. Instead, you'll start spending your energy finding the solution, educating yourself, informing yourself, empowering yourself. And this is exactly what happened to me. This is why I have no sympathy when these students email me. I tell them, suck it up. Nobody cares about your excuses. Just work harder. Just dominate. Nobody cares. How many of you guys, how many times you guys cried out to people for help, help? And everyone's like, yeah, okay, just, you know, I can't help you. Because nobody cares. No one can help you. You have to help yourself. And it starts with making your mind up to say, you are powerful enough to find a solution. In my own case, right, again, the reason I don't have any sympathy is because I was there. What's worse, I'll ask you, as a first-generation college student who didn't have the money to be there, had to take out loans just to live in a triple occupancy dorm, right, I'm the only dark-faced student of color in my entire building, I clearly don't belong there, I'm in the sciences, people looking at me crazy, And I went in telling myself, man, I just want to get through. Man, just don't get sent home. Man, you're not qualified. And I told myself I was a C student. And so guess what I was? I was a C student. And then through all this, I'm just barely hanging on. And I go to meet with my counselor and she tells me that I'm not good enough to be in college. And she confirms my suspicions. She confirms my negative thoughts about myself. Imagine that moment, guys. Who could I turn to? And funny enough... Because I was so heartbroken, actually, I I went to this counselor's office and we had this meeting and I had ridden my Razor scooter down there. And maybe you guys don't know what a Razor scooter is. Maybe they're coming back into fashion. I actually saw someone on a Razor scooter recently, so maybe they're coming back. But I'm a big guy to be on a tiny Razor scooter, but it was so fast when I'm on it, right? And so I was so upset after the encounter with my counselor, I literally couldn't even ride my scooter back. I had to put that thing on my shoulder and walk it back. It's because I was so upset. I shouldn't, right? You shouldn't drive when you're upset. I was upset. And I went back to my dorm and I did what we all do, right? I looked for a pity party. I looked for someone to justify and to validate what I was just told. I called my mom and I said, hey, mom, my counselor just told me I can't be a doctor. Just told me I'm not good enough to survive in college. Told me I'm not smart enough to get the A. And my mom, and I'm thankful to my mom so much for this. I'm thankful to my father so much for this because they would never ever right they're the birth i say i'm the origin of this my parents are the origin of no she just dominate because i called my mom and i told her hey i can't i can't be a doctor i can't be a great student i'm not capable and she fired back on the phone totally calm she's at work totally calm well i don't understand how it's impossible for you to get an a because someone has to get an a right and she, i'm like mom you don't understand i'm like there's there's 400 students in my class and only 19 people get a's we got the hard curve and she's like well again if there's 19 people who get a's why can't you be one of the 19? I'm like, mom, I'm not that smart. I'm not one of the 19. I'm the other 400. Recognize, right? Like you're lucky I'm not one of the 19 who's getting an F. Recognize who I am. And she's like, no, what you need to do is go talk to those A students, figure out what they're doing, and you can do that too. I was like, mom, oh, that's an excellent idea actually, right? Mom's always right. And so what did I do, guys? When I wanted to transform, when I wanted to change my life, it started with understanding from my mom shaking me loose. Thank you, mom, for saying, no, you aren't that bad student. You're choosing to be that bad student. There is a solution. I know you see yourself as this remedial student, but you're more than that. And she shook me loose of that and said, go figure out the solution. And she changed my perspective. And so often where people interpret me as being harsh or being very uh, like no compassion. I have all the compassion and the empathy in the world, guys. I care about you so much, I won't let you. I won't let you quit on yourself. I won't let you doubt yourself. I won't let you be less than you are capable of. And oh man, it was a bitter pill to swallow, right? And swallow that pride. I had to go to these A students and I say, hey, you are smart and I am dumb. I'm, I'm gonna fail. I need your help. How are you getting the A's? Can you teach me what you're doing? And what's amazing, right? This is our human nature. We always want to be smart. We always want to be in the know. Without fail, 
actually that's not true. A couple of these students were like, no, get away from me, dummy, right? Like that kind of thing, like, nah, like, you know, nose in the air. No, I don't know the answers to the assignments, even though I have perfect homework record, right? And they were like, no, we're not gonna help you. But then I would say, out of, let's call it 19 A students. Out of those 19, 17 couldn't wait to tell me everything they knew about studying. Couldn't wait to tell me everything they were doing to get the A's. And even though like now as a studying expert, I recognize a lot of what they told me was trash, I went to these students and as they were so happy to show how smart they were, what they didn't recognize was that I was essentially the villain in the movie. And I'm secretly sucking their superhero powers, right? I got the kryptonite for their superpowers because now not only do I have the intelligence of one of those students, I have the intelligence, the superhuman power of all 17 of the 19. So now I'm 17 times the student they are. You guys see what I'm saying? My mom shook me loose and said, hey, change your perspective, there's a solution, go ask those students. I went, swallowed my pride, asked these students what they were doing to be successful, got that information, and this is, again, some people get to this step, and you guys who are there who are like, man, I need information, I'm here listening to Dr. Pine said, he's gonna give me some advice, he's gonna give me what I need to be successful, I applaud you. But getting, seeking the information and getting the information are just the first steps. Right? We get our mind right, we then seek out the information, we get the information. What's next, guys? What is the, this is where, like, some people are able to get that information, but this is where so many people fall off. We have to execute. We have to implement. And I implemented what I learned like nobody's business, y'all. I got to work. I got to hustling, I got to put in the time, and I spent so much time studying guys, my whole social life disappeared. But what's amazing is when I started dedicating myself to my studies, and I started focusing on that as a priority, and I started implementing, I started believing I could be great, what do you know? I became great. And I started getting the A's. I started being that person. When I walked into a room they knew, oh snap, curve setter in the building, wide berth, back away. Back away. You don't want these A, these A elbows right here. These are A elbows. You don't want them. They knew what was up. And it all started, guys. Step one was recognizing that every single reason I thought I couldn't be successful was just an excuse. And it was me magnifying and amplifying and concretizing these obstacles making them larger than life that was holding me back. And I could not be my successful self until I changed that. And for so many of you guys listening to this right now, if I'm right, tell me. If I'm wrong, comment that as well. Let me know if I'm lying on you right now. But so many of you guys out there, you're coming here. You understand there is a problem in your life. And you, and you struggle with that. You doubt yourself. You talk, you talk so, no, I couldn't say anything that's half as hurtful to you as you say to yourself every single day. How many of you guys is that you? You have a constant running, never ending. Some of y'all can't even sleep at night because you're so busy talking trash on yourself. You're so busy talking down. You can't even quiet yourself to go to sleep. <laughs> you were in your own head, in your, right? Chipping away peeling away, knocking yourself down a pedestal. If you don't believe in yourself, and there's something my dad once told me, it was a sports, right? My, again, my parents, big time influencers to get me to be successful. My dad, <clears throat> I, was, I was at this basketball camp and this scout who was for one of the major colleges, this is a junior high, and he comes up to me and he's like, hey, yeah, you know, um, We've been watching you, like how are things going? Like, where do you see yourself fitting? And I'm like, oh, you know, I'm not sure. You know, I'm trying to do my best. And then after my dad put me aside, like, what are you doing? And I'm like, what do you mean? I was just I was just talking. They asked me a question. He's like, that's not what you say. How are you gonna say that about yourself? Like, oh, I'm just doing all right, I'm just with the team, whatever. That's not what you say. When someone asks you who who you are, you tell them how great you are, how amazing you are. You let them know, you blow the, the, the trumpets, you sound the horns to let them know that greatness is in the building. And I was like, what are you talking about? He's like, he's like, how do you expect a Division I coach to go out on a limb and extend to you a contract that's gonna guarantee you $100,000 in tuition over the next however many years, they're gonna to commit to training you, to teach you, all these kind of things. 
how do you expect them to believe in you if you don't believe in yourself? Guys, if you're not your own number one fan, you got a problem. Only you can lead your fan club. Because if you don't believe in yourself, other people are not going to believe in you. They're not going to give you opportunities. They're not going to give you the support because it's going to feel wasted on you. And I encourage all of you guys, get your thoughts in alignment. Understand there's a big difference between perspective and reality. And yes, problems are real. Yes, problems exist. Yes, the disadvantage, intellectual disability, physical disability, you name it. Mental health issues, anxiety, depression, you name it. Yes, they're real. 100%. But what we have to do is take their power, guys. And instead of magnifying them and, and making them an insurmountable obstacle, we have to shrink them and say, you know what? I've got problems, but there's a solution out there for it. And I'm going to fix it. I'm going to fix it. And to me, the perception change was so strong, I couldn't even acknowledge them as problems. I don't have problems. I got excuses. But it's okay. Because whatever the excuse is, I'm just going to dominate. That was literally what I would say to myself. Oh, yeah, mm, yeah, that's, yeah that's, that's an excuse. <laughs> that's a reason to fail, but I'm going to dominate anyway. And I just encourage you guys to understand. You got to be, and I was it Cat Williams said, you got to be in touch with your star player. You got to be your own biggest fan. You got to be your own biggest cheerleader. Because if you don't believe in yourself, other people can't believe in yourself. If you don't believe in yourself, you truly cannot achieve for yourself. So I encourage all of you guys to understand what I'm saying. What I'm saying here now is that, yes, mindset isn't everything. What did I say? Part of my journey of mindset, and then I got into learning what those students told me to do and then implementing what those students told me to do. And we're going to get into more of this as we move through these episodes. But if you guys can't get your mind right to believe in yourself, everything is lost. You've already lost. You will not reach your goals. I guarantee you this. And I'm the type of person, I say any student, including you, can be great, can reach their goals, can beat themselves, can get the A's. But the reality, guys, I'm a realist. Not all of you will get the A's. Not all of you will be your greatness. Not all of you will step up to your success. And it starts with not allowing yourself to get there mentally. Do we understand? This is why my introductory course, the course I recommend students get first from me, is my successful student 21-day mindset makeover. Why? Because in these 21 days, I'm going to take all that old baggage you have, all that negativity, all these false perspectives and perception of the world, and I'm going to chop them down. I'm going to knock them down. I'm going to push them into the ground. And then I'm going to build you up in a new mental framework that is healthy, that is productive, and that will propel you to your greatness and to your future. So please, 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 guys, check out that course, The Successful Student 21 Day Mindset Makeover. I have a discount link for you in the show notes below. Please check that out. Believe in yourself, guys. You all can dominate. You all can be great. But you got to start first believing it and then start making moves and actions towards it. And that's what we're going to continue to talk about on this show. If you've enjoyed this episode, take the time, guys. Let me know. Give me a comment. Give me a review. Send me a message. Let me know you're enjoying this. If you have an issue you want me to discuss on this show, how do you guys reach me? What's the easy way to reach me? Get to my website, studenttransformation.com and click on leave me a voicemail, send me a voicemail, say, hey, Dr. Pinesett, I felt your message today. I felt it, but I'm having this excuse, this issue, and I need you to fix it. Can you, can you address it on the show? Can you address it on the show? Let me know, help me out, and I will do it for you guys. I will help you guys. I will put you in a position to be successful because I'm here to serve you guys. I'm here to help you guys. I'm on a mission to empower one million students, guys. One million students by 2025. Help me help you. Help me get there, guys. Help me bring that empowerment. All right. Thank you guys so much. Like I said, if you enjoy this, please let me know that you're enjoying this show. You're enjoying this episode and tell me, but bring more of that fire, bring more of that heat. I want to hear more on topics like that. So that way I can continue to bring you guys content you need. I thank you so very much. I'm Dr. Pintet. And how do we end every single show? No excuses. Just dominate, guys. I'll see you next time. Today is the day, guys. No more excuses. No more complaining. You're going to take your future in your own hands. You're going to dominate. You're going to be successful. Get to my website, studenttransformation.com. I challenge you. What are you going to do today to make your life better?